Hi everybody, Ian with Corkum here. I just wanted to do a quick review of a couple of products I recently picked up to help with my motor vlog and uh, some of the things that I think that may come in handy if you're looking to record some footage uh, while riding a motorcycle. I also picked up an intercom system to help listen to music without having to use ear, earbuds because everybody knows that that's just an awful way to run audio and to listen to music. It, it's really just frustrating. Um, the earplugs come out, the earphones come out. Uh, they're kind of a pain in the butt to run to keep in. So I decided to upgrade my equipment, go with something a little more hands free, a little stress, more stress free rather. I bought a new helmet. I bought the Icon Alliance GT. I'll be doing a review of that. The GoPro Hero 4 Silver. The Cena SMH-10R Bluetooth intercom system. As well as the Cena Bluetooth audio pack. Jumping right in to the helmet, which I'll review first. Uh, basically, I decided to purchase a new helmet. And I went with the Icon Alliance GT primary helmet. This is the red and black edition, as you can see. I, I felt like this was probably uh, the best helmet that I found that was available. It's a new helmet that just recently released by Icon. It's just like the uh, other Icon Alliance helmet, except this is the GT series. It's basically just a new updated version. This does have a locked Pro Shield as well, so it's kind of a nice shield. It locks well. As you can see, I had some trouble opening it. It's kind of nice. You don't have to worry about the windscreen flipping up at high speeds. It does have a built-in sun visor as well. Uh, mine's a chrome plated one. They're different colors depending on which helmet uh, variant you buy. The chrome visor is nice. You're riding out during the day or in the sun. You don't have to worry about putting on sunglasses. It's just really convenient to have it right in, inside the helmet. And there's just a little switch on the side there that allows you to flip it up and down as needed. It's not uh, you permitted to use during the night, obviously, just due because you can't see. It's pretty dark. The helmet itself is extremely comfortable. It has the Hydra Dry uh, internal padding, which is very easy to clean and very comfortable. Uh, this, this helmet runs a little tighter than some of the other helmets I've tried on. Uh, I, like, I like that. It's not hot. The helmet does vent well. It does have some really large vents at the top of the helmet here, as you can see. Uh, these, these vents here are kind of cool. It kind of gives an aesthetic mod as well. Kind of makes the helmet a little more aggressive. And there's really large ram air vents in the back. Open those up. Helps draw all the, the warm air inside the helmet and flow it out through the back of the helmet. So that's kind of a nice feature. Uh, I haven't really seen anything else like this out on the market. There's tons of different helmets and styles out there. This is just the one that I personally liked. Uh, the color on this is pretty cool. It really pops. It's, it's a little different. It's a red and black color. It's kind of a light red and it fades into a, a black a, a black with a red mix in it. It's really nice. Icon makes good helmets and they, they're affordable too. This helmet's actually only like $210, $220 around there. You can pick them up on Redzilla, Amazon, or buy them from Icon themselves. They do have interchangeable shields. You can get a smoke shield if you wish. But with the drop down sun visor, you don't really need that unless you want to run a smoke screen if you don't ride at night. You can also change the, uh, the drop down visor colors as well. So it's kind of a cool helmet. Uh, it does have a double D ring feature here. Uh, that's pretty much it for the helmet. Uh, I just like it. I thought it was cool looking. And that's what I decided to buy for a new helmet. I was in the market for a new one anyway. I didn't want to spend $600, $700 on a, a Shoei or a Raya helmet, even though they're really sweet. Uh, I went with a little cheaper style helmet. Mount on my camera on the front here, as you can see. So I'm going to jump right into the GoPro Hero 4 review. I bought the GoPro Hero 4 Silver Edition. This edition of the GoPro Hero 4 has an LCD screen, which is the, the difference between the black and the silver is just simply that, is the GoPro Hero 4 Silver has the LCD screen on the back so you can look through the videos that you recently recorded, delete, what have you. So that's kind of a nice feature. It's not really a necessity, I'll be honest, because they have nowadays the GoPro Hero app. You can connect it right to your uh, GoPro Hero 4 on your phone, and you can play, edit, delete all the videos through your phone. It's really simple. You just uh, basically connect, uh, turn on the Wi-Fi on the camera. Yes, it is Wi-Fi capable. Connect it to your phone, and then you can edit, delete, and play 
back features from your phone. It's kind of a nice feature that GoPro has. As you can see, you kind of wonder, probably wonder why I have two separate cases. This is the original waterproof case that the GoPro Hero 4 comes with. I can't use this case because I'm running the Bluetooth audio pack for the GoPro, which I have to have to use this headset, which we'll get into. However, the GoPro Hero 4 does come with a waterproof case in the event that you're going to be uh, going in the rain, anything to do with water, you're going to want to have the Bluetooth, or I'm sorry, you're going to want to have the a waterproof case on the camera. So the video recording quality on the GoPro Hero 4 Silver Edition is 1080p, 60 frames per second. The GoPro Hero 4 Black Edition, however, has 4K recording video, video ability. The 4K, the 4K recording is, is awesome. It has great video. Uh, however, it's an extra $100. These will run you $500 for the GoPro Hero 4 Black and the silver edition is 400 so there's a hundred dollar difference the silver edition has the lcd screen for a hundred less dollars so that's the route i chose uh, i'm not going to be doing a lot of 4k video recording so i didn't really need it i will recommend that if you do decide to go with the gopro hero 4 you will need to get a an extreme sd card uh, i would say that because the micro sd card that that you will need is is going to need to be to keep up with the, the 1080p recording, you don't want it to jump around or glitch while you're recording. So you need to pick up a uh, an extreme SD card. I bought a 64 gigabyte SanDisk Extreme 9095 uh, up uh, read and write. It's 90 read and uh, 95 write speed. So I, that's the one that I chose, uh, just a SanDisk. Uh, they run you about $100, so they're not cheap. A little tiny product will cost you $100. But it's worth it in the end. You won't have to worry about any lagging in your videos and whatnot. That's just what I decided to go with. I would recommend that for these, just because they are a little more high quality recording, and you get you, you're going to get uh, you're going to get a cleaner record as well. So that's what I decided to do. The GoPro Hero 4 comes with uh, a couple different mount styles. You can run a, a curved mount or a flat mount, and it has a couple of cool accessories on there. You can kind of custom creating your own mount, which is what I had to do for the chin mount. So I'll show you exactly uh, how I decided to do that. Basically all I did was I created, uh, out of the provided accessories, I created a nice little chin mount, as you can see here. Uh, that's what I just, there's, that's where I decided to mount the camera. I felt like this was the best view possible. If you tilt your head down just to where you'll, you would be normally looking the camera's facing straight. So that was like the best view that I thought that I could possibly get for recording uh, video footage. I went away from mounting on the top just simply because a lot of videos I've seen where the camera's mounted on the top, it's looking down, and I just didn't really care for that. And I didn't want it on the sides either. One, I have this Xena Bluetooth head uh, controller on the side, and also I didn't want to worry about possibly hitting the camera on something going through a doorway or whatever and breaking it off. That'd be bad. Um, so that's, this, that's the route I decided to go uh, to each his own, but that's how I decided to mount it. So. I'm going to move on to the SMH-10R headset from Cena. A lot of people are wondering, how do people record such high-quality videos with good sound? The trick is, is to getting a, a good Bluetooth headset and intercom. This is the SMH-10R. It's the newest, I do believe it's the newest product for, from Cena as far as Bluetooth and headset and intercoms go. This is a more of a low profile motorcycle Bluetooth headset. It does come with two speakers, it comes with a battery pack, it comes with a wire microphone, a boom mic, and then as well as the controller on the side there. It does come with everything you need. It comes with all the mounting hardware, a lot of it's 3M double sided tape, and there's also some Velcro accessories as well to help you mount some things inside the helmet. I open the box and connect everything to my helmet in probably 35 to 45 minutes tops. It didn't take me that long. Uh, as you can see, there's really no wire showing. You do have to run a wire down the side and a wire down the back if, if you so choose. You can place the battery pack inside the helmet if you wish. You can put them wherever you want. This is just the way I decided to do it. The speakers, which you won't be able to see, are mounted on the inside of the helmet, right up against, right underneath the ear rest of the helmet. Uh, you want to make sure that you get a helmet that has enough room so you can mount those speakers. You don't want them pressing on your ears too hard. Obviously, they'd be uncomfortable. But this helmet works just fine if you decide to do that. So that's the route I decided to go. The microphone's mounted 
right inside here just above the chin so it's nice and clear when you're speaking into it it does have a little bit of wind noise you can see from some of my videos but it's not too bad actually I like it so uh, it's, it's not too bad this is a wonderful product guys it really is it has a seven hours of standby time and it has or sorry seven days standby time and eight hours talk time so you're getting plenty of, of uh, talk time and, and standby time with this you don't have to charge it very often I usually just charge it uh, right after I use it I just throw it on the charger as soon as I get home that's what I do uh, also the, the speakers in this you can connect you can connect this headset directly to your phone uh, so you can listen to music if you wish it also is voice prompted so you can do like speed dial in your phone so if somebody calls you or you want to call somebody it's all voice prompt so that's kind of nice the menu system is nice you don't have some big dial knob like I've seen some of the other Cena products, which are which are good. I heard people like those. However, I wanted something more, a little more profile. So they went with a three-button style system here, which I'll show you. Uh, Cena basically went with a three-button style system here. Uh, you just press these two on the side, and that powers it. Blue indicator light comes on, and inside the helmet, it will say, hello, and welcome you. And then you can kind of rifle through the menus by simply pressing the middle button of the Cena controller and it'll cycle through the menus. So it's going to tell you what you're doing, which is kind of nice. And when you hold it, it that's actually the red it means that you turned it off. It has the volume adjustments here and here, uh, as well as there's a couple selections that you'll use to help pair, to help you pair with other uh, Bluetooth headsets if you're running with a group. Uh, so overall, like I said, I'm, I'm extremely happy with this product. Good sound quality. Good quality from the speakers, as far as that goes. Um, that's mainly what I'm, I'm using it for. A lot of times I'm, I'm riding for maybe a half hour to an hour. I like to uh, jam in some tunes. So this is a pretty cool system for that. Um, getting to the Cena Bluetooth audio pack. If you decide that you want to run a GoPro Hero 4, and you decide that you would like to purchase the Cena SMH-10R, you will need, which this, this is going to run you about $164. It's about 164 off anywhere you buy it. It's, it's really uh, pretty much the same price everywhere you go. You might get a good deal somewhere if you shop around. But you will need the Cena Bluetooth audio pack. The reason is because you cannot directly connect the Cena Bluetooth headset to the GoPro. It doesn't work that way. You cannot connect them. So you need the audio pack to connect to the GoPro. Uh, this is $100. Not the cheapest thing out there. But it's a, it's a necessity for the GoPro. You have to have it. So um, it's a great it's a great product. From what I've seen already, it does have a, a 40 meter waterproof case uh, that basically comes with the package and the audio pack. So because because you're actually connecting the audio pack to the back of the GoPro Hero 4, you <coughs> you will need to change that from the original waterproof case because it just won't fit this one's a lot skinnier than the waterproof case you will have to change that out the it does have a couple cool features um, it's got 110 meters of, of audio recording you, know, you can kind of walk away if you really want to but you don't really need to because it's right there uh, however you can choose whether you want the sound to come directly into the camera or if you want it to come into your headset. So if you're not worried about uh, wind noise or outside sound, you can just run it straight from the camera, which is just a, sw uh, a simple switch, toggle switch. Or you can choose to run it through your helmet, which is what I do, and run it through your Cena SMH-10R headset, and it'll play. You can anything you say will record directly into your microphone. It also has like sound dampening, so if you if you do decide to run it through your helmet, it'll have like a sound dampening feature. So you know if your bike's really loud or if you got some loud cars beside you, it'll kind of deafen all of those sounds. So that way, when you're speaking, you're hearing you you you're not listening to motorcycle noises or anything like that. So kind of cool feature that they've put into it. I really like it. Uh, it's a good it's a good product. It's a necessity necessity product for the GoPro Hero Four. So you kind of have to have it. You really don't have a choice if you decide to go this route. But I like it. I like everything that I've purchased. I think this is a good quality setup for motovlogging or just general cruising with the headset. 
Uh, again, you know, GoPro Hero 4 Silver is going to cost you about $350. Uh, CNS MH10 our intercom system will run you about $165. The, Go, the GoPro Bluetooth uh, Cena audio pack is going to run you $100. The helmet is about $210 to $220. So, uh, money well spent. Uh, I like all the products, like I said. Um, if you have any questions or comments about any of these products I reviewed today, please comment in the section comment in the section below. Like and subscribe if you wish. Thank you and have a wonderful day.